Hey guys, so today I'm filming a video that a lot of you guys seem to like and I'm so glad because I think these videos are so much fun. I've done a couple of videos like this on my channel and I also got inspiration from a bunch of my favorites here on YouTube. So I'm gonna link some channels who film similar videos in the description box below. But today I'm talking about some makeup products I'm glad I didn't buy. I just think it's fun to do these videos because I have videos on my channel where I talk about makeup products I'm thinking about buying. Of course, I do haul videos and show you what I actually spend my money on. But I also think it's fun to look Look back at my wish list and you know just maybe products that were really popular and hyped up and say I'm glad I skipped that one I'm glad I saved my money for whatever reason maybe the product is getting really bad reviews maybe I found a good alternative there are all different reasons and if you guys have these products and you love them I think that's amazing I am NOT telling you that these are terrible products and you shouldn't buy them I'm just glad that I personally skipped over them and saved my money so let's jump into it and I'll kick it off with one that I think a lot of you might agree with me on okay so I wrote a list on my phone I'll also also put some pictures on the screen for you guys because I went through and took some screenshots so I could kind of reference the products as I talk about them but let's start with the Becca zero no pigment foundation so this might be an obvious one but I am glad that my curiosity didn't get the best of me and I did not end up spending my money on this so-called foundation I know everyone has different preferences when it comes to base products and foundations, but when it comes to foundation, I at least want my foundation to have a little bit of pigment because for me, the whole purpose behind foundation is to even out my skin tone, maybe cover redness, blur any breakouts or scarring that I'm dealing with. And if it doesn't have any pigment, then I feel like I would just skip foundation altogether. And there are days where I do that because you don't always want to take the time to apply foundation or always be wearing something on your skin. At least I don't. This foundation just feels like the biggest marketing ploy of 2020. They claim that it is a makeup and skincare hybrid with a transparent matte finish that smooths skin and blurs the look of imperfections while providing lasting hydration, which sounds amazing for a primer or a skincare product, but not necessarily a foundation. It's funny because when I was watching reviews on this product, because I did watch a couple just because I was curious to hear what people would say, a lot of people ended up using it as a primer and they kind of enjoyed it in that way, but I don't think I saw one review where someone actually recommended picking it up and using it as a foundation. I almost feel like if Becca had released this as a primer, it would have gotten a lot of great reviews, people would have been recommending it, but the fact that they're kind of marketing it as a foundation is honestly just kind of weird to me. So for me, I'm not into it. I want my foundation to have at least a little bit of pigment, but if you guys tried it, I would love to know what you think, and if there's anyone that actually loves it, let me know. Along the same lines, I am glad that I didn't buy the Becca Zero No Pigment Glass Highlighter. For $24, they're offering like this liquid highlighter lip gloss all-in-one, which in and of itself sounds kind of weird because thinking about applying any of my lip glosses to my cheek as a highlighter does not sound appealing just because they don't dry down at all. And even though I'm not someone who's big on cream cheek products, I feel like lip gloss and liquid highlighter are so different and the textures that you want for each one is just different overall. So a lot of the reviews that I was watching said that this didn't dry down. So on your face, if your hair touched it, it would kind of stick to it. It was uncomfortable. A lot of people did like it on the lips, but I have a $3 clear gloss from e.l.f. that does the job. So if you're truly looking for like a good clear gloss, the e.l.f. clear lip lacquer is perfect. It's great. It goes with any lip product. I want Becca to do well because I like so many of their products. I love their highlighters, their bronzer, their blushes in the past, their primers are great, but I just feel like a lot of their new releases don't catch my attention and this whole collection just kind of felt a little bit gimmicky for me. So one of my favorite makeup releases of 2020 would have to be the Natasha Denona Bronze Eyeshadow Palette. I have been enjoying that one so much. I think I got it like a month or two ago and I've been using it nonstop. I'm not wearing it today because I told myself I need to use some of my other eyeshadow palettes, but I haven't been able to put that one down. At the same time, she released the Bronze Face Palette. And as beautiful as that one is, I'm glad I skipped over that one. So I haven't purchased any of the Natasha Denona Face Palettes with the exception of the Bloom Blush and Glow palette, which came out, was it last year or the year before? For some reason, I can't find mine. I really haven't been anywhere in 2020, so I didn't travel with it, and it's not in my house anywhere. So I don't know if I accidentally decluttered it or got rid of it, and I'm so sad because I usually love wearing that one during the spring and summer, but it's literally nowhere to be found. I'm going to repaint the room that I film in 
probably on Labor Day. So I'm hoping that like when I clear everything out, it magically pops up, but I can't find it. Anyway, the reason why I'm glad I didn't buy the bronze face palette is just because I've stopped wearing cream products. I don't think that I've reached for them really at all in 2020. And I think I've just come to accept the fact that I prefer powders. There are some cream formulas that I like, but I always say this, if I have the option between like a cream highlighter and a powder highlighter, nine times out of 10, I'm going to grab the powder highlighter. So with that in the back of my mind, I really try not to buy a lot of cream products. And sometimes these face palettes kind of pull me in because I'm like, there are only one or two creams and the other shades are powders, but I really try not to buy a lot of palettes these days, face palettes or eye palettes, unless I think I'll use all of the shades. By the way, Coco, my 12 year old pug, is in the room with me right now. He's sitting underneath my desk and he is snoring away. So if you hear any snoring, that is him. The other two pugs are not here. They are at doggy daycare getting all of their energy out. So he is loving it because they're a lot younger than him. So they usually keep him awake all day. So he's just sleeping the day away. Another bronzer I'm glad I didn't buy is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. This got so much hype when it was first released. I feel like 2020 is kind of like the year of new bronzer, and a lot of brands have been releasing new bronzers. Maybe they've done this in the past. I feel like I'm just kind of noticing it more because I am so into trying some new formulas this year. Before 2020, I was just like set with my two or three bronzers, and I still love those, but at this point, it's kind of a product that I'm getting into a little bit more. So whenever there is a new bronzer release, least I'm a little bit intrigued and when it came to this one I was curious because I love the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish powder that is one of my favorite makeup products of all time it is so smooth and silky and pretty on the skin at this point I have found a dupe I use the flower beauty light illusion in place of it which is great because the Charlotte Tilbury product is pretty expensive and you don't get a lot of product in it so anyway this bronzer did appeal to me because it kind of had the same claims same claims. It's supposed to be really blendable, silky, smooth. It is a $55 bronzer, which is pretty pricey. I do think I heard that it comes with a good amount of product, and I think I also read this bronzer is refillable. Of course, that's great. I wish more brands would do refillable packaging because obviously it's better for the environment. It saves the consumer money. It has to save the brand money because they don't have to continuously make the entire product in the packaging. They can just do refill pans. But Anyway, uh, that being said, the reason why I'm glad I didn't buy this one is because I feel like the hype really died down after it was released, and I haven't heard anyone talk about it in a few months. So I don't know if that means that the product isn't as good as everyone was hoping, or if it's just kind of like a forgettable formula. I briefly looked at the reviews on Sephora's website, and it kind of had mixed reviews. Some people were saying it was the best bronzer they had ever tried. Some people were saying there wasn't a lot of pigment. So I just feel like for $55, it sounds like it's a little bit hit and miss, and there aren't rave reviews either online on Instagram or YouTube or on the Sephora website. So for me, I don't want to take the chance on a $55 bronzer if there's a chance that it doesn't perform that well. When it comes to like smooth, silky, blendable bronzers, I'm pretty set with my e.l.f. Primer Infused Bronzer, which is like, what is that? Like $3? Why? Yeah, $3. Why am I forgetting the price? No, I think it's $6. Yeah, it's $6. I don't know why I said three, but six is obviously still a lot less expensive than 55. Or the Balms Take on the Bronze, which I think is like, why can't I remember the prices? Like these are my go-to products, maybe 16 or 17. I know it's under 20. Again, I feel like my brain is all over the place today. But either way, those are a lot less expensive. And I have tried a lot of bronzer formulas this year, but those are still my go-to for like a really blendable, smooth formula. So I'm glad I skipped that one. Have you guys tried this bronzer? Bronzer. If you have, what do you think? While we're on the topic, what is your favorite bronzer? Like your go-to bronzer? If money is not an issue, like what is the brand that you would repurchase over and over? Okay, let's talk about a few eyeshadow palettes I'm glad I didn't buy. At any given point in time, there are like 10 different eyeshadow palettes on my wish list. Sometimes I do videos where I talk about like older palettes that are on my wish list that still pull me in. So maybe I'll do an updated one of those. If this was 2018, like I would purchase every single palette I had my eye on. But because I've kind of put those guidelines in place where I only purchase one per month, it's been really good for me because I don't feel like I purchase a lot of palettes that I end up regretting because I really think through them before I add them to my collection. And then I can kind of look back and say, I'm glad I skipped that one and purchased this one instead. So that being said, I am glad that I skipped over the Melt Cosmetics Rust Palette. I really like the other two Melt Palettes that I have in my collection. I have Smoke Sessions and I also have the Morte Palette and they both perform so 
so well. I kind of had my eye on the Rust palette because the other two that I own are a lot more colorful and I thought it might be fun to try just like a toned down neutral melt palette because I do like their formula so much. As pretty as this is, I have to say that I'm glad that I skipped over it because soon after the Rust palette was released, Natasha Denona released the Bronze palette. And as I was saying earlier, I love that palette. It's one of my favorite releases of 2020. And if I had purchased Rust, I wouldn't have purchased Bronze because even though they're not the exact same, they're both warm toned neutral palettes. And I don't buy a lot of those palettes these days because I do have some in my collection. So when I'm buying a new palette, it's usually either a cool toned palette or a colorful palette or maybe, you know, something in between. But I wouldn't feel the need to have both of these in my collection. And I'm so glad that I waited because the bronze palette appeals to me so much more. I think the rust palette is nice if you like matte shadows because the majority of the shadows in there are matte. But the nice thing about the bronze palette is that the majority of the shadows are shimmers or duochromes or metallics. What you guys prefer when it comes to palettes? Do you prefer for your palette to have more matte shadows or more shimmer shadows? I always think this is interesting because for me, I definitely prefer prefer more shimmers or metallics, but I know a lot of people don't. And I think that was a big topic of discussion around the Natasha Denona bronze palette and also the new Natasha Denona palette, which I'm going to film a purchaser pass video tomorrow and talk about it. But she just announced this glam palette, which is kind of like a cooler toned version of bronze, which I'll talk about in my next video or my upcoming purchaser pass. But what do you guys prefer? I like when a palette has a lot of shimmers and metallics just because I have my go-to matte shadows. So anyway, I'm glad that I waited and skipped over rust because I think, you know, in the end, I will get so much more use out of the Natasha Denona bronze palette. I'm also glad that I skipped the Melt Cosmetics 420 palette. Honestly, I didn't really think that I was going to buy this one, but whenever Melt releases a new palette, I do kind of consider it because I do like their formula and I've really been interested in trying more of their palettes in 2020. So, you know, whenever they release something, I kind of eye it and think about buying it. This one has some really interesting and unique colors in it because you do get some yellows, some greens, some browns, when they released this one, I actually went into my collection to see if I had any palettes that had similar colors. And I do have some palettes that have a couple of those interesting colors in them. But, you know, when did they release this? I assume back in April because it's the 420 palette. I don't think I've done like one yellow look. I did one green look the other day because I've been using the new Tiny Marvels palette from Sydney Grace and Mel Thompson, which I actually kind of liked. Not the palette, I love the palette, but typically I don't wear green, so I was surprised by how much I actually liked the look. I wore it in my August Favorites video, so maybe I'll have to play with yellows and lime greens more often, but again, I think if I had purchased this palette, it would just be sitting in my drawer going unused the majority of the time because those aren't colors I reach for super often. I almost bought one of these Buxom lip glosses. They released an entire fall collection. I think it's only available at Ulta, and the Buxom glosses are $21 each. They're so good. And as far as lip products or high-end lip products go, in my mind, they're worth the money because the formula is just so smoothing and it makes your lips look amazing. So they kind of release like these limited edition lip glosses. One is pumpkin spice scented. One is apple cider scented. Actually, two are pumpkin spice and two are apple cider. But there's kind of like a really pretty range of nudes. And some are a little bit lighter, some are a little bit darker. And I just felt like there was like my perfect nude in that lineup. But do I really need to buy full-size lip glosses these days? I don't think so. I do wear lip products, you know, but I feel like I've been reaching for lip oils or tinted lip balms, not really even gloss, because if I'm wearing a mask, I mean, usually I'll skip a lip product altogether. But if I'm wearing a mask that kind of like, sticks out a little bit and I want a lip product on, it's going to be something not, it's going to be something simple like a lip balm, not a lip gloss or a lipstick. I haven't completely abandoned all of my lip products because I film YouTube videos so I get to wear them for that purpose and sometimes I'll just wear them for fun. But you know, $21 on a full size lip gloss doesn't sound like a great idea right now when I know that I have lip glosses in my collection right over there. So I'm glad that I was able to exercise some self control. I also feel like the hype kind of died down after I waited for a little while, like in my own mind. So I try not to impulse purchase because if you just wait a few weeks, sometimes products just don't don't feel as exciting, you don't feel like you have to have them, and you just gain a little bit of perspective, which I think is what happened for me with these lip glosses. I'm also telling myself I'm glad I skipped over this Kosas Mini Wet Set Clean Lip Oil Trio. So for $25, you get three minis, and 
you know, I feel like I'm still kind of eyeing this, but I feel like it's good that I skipped over it because ColourPop actually released their lip oils, which are really nice. But after trying those, I'm just reminded that all lip oils feel so similar and look so similar. This probably isn't the case because I haven't tried a ton of lip oils, but the few formulas that I have tried are kind of interchangeable in my collection, and I feel like they're all very lightweight, they're not sticky. I'm sure that some are more pigmented than others, and these do look pretty pigmented, but I think I've come to the conclusion when it comes to a lip oil, I don't want a lot of pigment because they don't stay in place well, and they kind of move around. They're great, they're really comfortable, but I definitely prefer more of a sheer formula and if I want a really bright red, I'm going to reach for a liquid lipstick or even a regular lipstick over something really slippery and something that doesn't have a lot of longevity. I am glad that I skipped over the Milk Makeup Kush liquid liners. So I have to say I'm pretty satisfied when it comes to liquid liner because I do love the Urban Decay Perversion. That is my go-to. I also like the ColourPop liner. I like an e.l.f. liner. So as far as liquid liners go, I don't feel like I need to try a lot of new formulas. But because I do love winged liners so much, I wear it like 9 times out of 10 when I'm taking the time to do my makeup. I feel like I'm always just searching for like the next best one. Even though I have a staple reliable formulas, they always appeal to me, but I'm glad I did not buy this one because I was checking it out on Sephora's website the other day when they were kind of doing their like welcome back sale because the Urban Decay Perversion Liner that I'm using is getting close to the end. So I thought maybe instead of repurchasing that, I would try a new one. But the reviews on this aren't they don't sound great I mean there are some good reviews for sure as there are with any product but the big thing is that a lot of people are saying it's not super dramatic and it kind of has like a little bit of like I guess like a soft black finish like it's not super intense on the eyes and then other people were saying it's patchy uneven hard to apply and that is just not what I want in a liquid liner I want something that's going to glide on in two seconds and just be very very easy to use so I am glad that I skipped over that one also I had like an allergic reaction to the milk makeup kush mascara that made my eyes so itchy and uncomfortable and my eyes are already a complete mess because I'm dealing with seasonal allergies so they're red and itchy all day anyway. So if I had tried a product that would irritate them, it, it would just be terrible. And I don't know that this would actually irritate my eyes, but for some reason, something in the Kush mascara just did not make my eyes happy. So I feel like it could be the skin case for the eyeliner. In the end, it's good that I skipped over it. I actually have one more lip product. So Anastasia Beverly Hills has been quiet for a little while. We haven't seen a ton of new releases from them, but they did release a new lip stain formula. So these retail for $18 each. I will say that I really like the packaging and that is what initially caught my eye when I saw these on Instagram. At first I thought they might be liquid lipsticks and I still haven't tried the original Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick formula. I've thought about trying it in the past, but I just feel like a lot of people say that it's a very dry formula, as are most liquid lipsticks. At this point, I love Dose of Colors and Ofra, and I can't imagine I'm going to purchase too many more liquid lipsticks because I feel like I'm pretty happy with those. But anyway, these did catch my eye for a second, but again, I checked out the reviews on Sephora. I'm someone who watches YouTube videos and I go on Instagram to see what people are saying about products, but I also read through the reviews on Sephora and Ulta. I know that has its own issues. Some people say that all of the reviews don't get published. Sometimes brands like inflate the reviews like Sunday Riley did, but I do think it kind of gives you a good idea. Whenever I'm buying anything online, I always read the reviews because Sometimes someone mentions something and I'm like, that's good to know. Now I don't think I should purchase that. So I've also been trying to be better about leaving reviews when I try something, whether it's really good or really bad. It doesn't have to be makeup. It can be like a vacuum, a blanket. I just think that reviews can be very, very helpful. So the reviews for this product are not good at all. A lot of people are saying that this is a very streaky, sticky, patchy product. It's uncomfortable. It's hard to use. It just has terrible reviews. So honestly, I feel like we're going to see these on clearance within the next few months because, I mean, if I scroll, once in a while I come across come across a good review, but for the most part, they're pretty bad. I don't know what it is about lip stains. I feel like whenever a brand markets something as a lip stain, it doesn't work for me. I think that I'd rather go for like a liquid lipstick and lip stains just tend to be very thin. So on me, they enhance any dryness and 
I mean, they kind of do end up looking streaky or patchy because they don't coat your lips like a gloss or a lipstick or even a liquid lipstick. They tend to be really thin and they do stay in place all day. So they suck the moisture out of your lips and Typically, I'm not into them. So those are all of the makeup products. I'm glad I did not buy this time around. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I apologize if I was all over the place. I feel like my head is just spinning. I've been dealing with a little bit of anxiety, which is not something that I've dealt with for a long time, but it just causes my brain to just kind of like go in 85 different directions. And I'm not sure exactly what's causing it because again, this isn't something that I've dealt with for probably a year and I've been pretty good during this entire quarantine, but I think it's just starting to get to me. I mean, it's been months at this point and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, but sitting down and filming YouTube videos definitely helps. It makes me feel good to chat with you guys. It's my happy place. I love it so much. So I hope that you guys are doing well and taking care of yourself physically and mentally during this crazy time. I appreciate you guys and I'll talk to you very soon in a new video. Bye.